again, welcome everyone. Um, today we are joined by the one and only Fibonacci princess, Tammy Marshall, um, who is the technical analyst at ElliottWaveTrader.net. To all of our live viewers, you can feel free to type any questions into that chat box and we'll try to save some time at the end to get those answered for you. Um, with that said, we're ready to go. And Tammy, the floor is all yours. Thank you so much. And I, I really appreciate y'all having me today. Um, and uh, glad to be presenting again with y'all. I wanted to present today um, an introduction to Fibonacci time and price. My name is Tammy Marshall. I'm also known as the Fibonacci princess. And uh, a lot of you know the Fibonacci queen. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second, but that is why my name is the Fibonacci princess is because my mentor is the queen of fibs, is what she's known as um, on Twitter now. And if you are on Twitter, my handle is at Trader Tammy One. Uh, welcome and thank you for being part of my time and price presentation. Uh, during my career, I've coached many people, and I know this will be an eye opening process for you. You may be familiar with some of the material, but I'll try to show you some new concepts and ideas to take your trading to the next level. My goal is to make your trading life easier and, of course, more profitable. Uh, who am I? I initially became interested in learning to trade from my husband in 2010. He would show me option strategies on Thinkorswim. And in 2014, I met Carolyn Baroden, the Fibonacci queen, on a trip to the Grand Caymans. Carolyn was looking for someone to mentor and train in her room. And from then on, Carolyn has been training me in Fibonacci analysis. And uh, now we work together at Elliott Wave Trader. I was actually a special ed teacher. I taught children with autism for 15 years before I did this job. So uh, the benefit of that is I um, am a great educator and also have a lot of patience <laughs> and love this job. Uh, my goal is to teach you how to trade more accurately using specific entries and exits based on Fibonacci analysis. My charts focus on the numbers derived from the Fibonacci sequence to help you design the right setup, whether you're trading stocks, options, or futures. If you'd like to be more consistent in your trading and have defined zones, and what I mean by that is defined risk, come visit the Fibonacci Markets and Stocks room at Elliott Wave Trader. All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. What would have told you to be a buyer of IWM in January? This is the kind of work that I do. What I do is I look at previous things in the market, and I use Fibonacci numbers to make predictions as to where we will have support and resistance. As you can see here, we had a lot of previous swings in the market. This is called symmetry. This is 100%. Those are the red numbers to the right. You can see the 1.0, that stands for 100%. They are exact swings that we've previously had in the market. On the left here, you can see there was a swing for $18.89 one for $19.22, one for $18.57, one for $18.90, and then another one here to the right, $17.49. All of those together gave us a lot of symmetry that I told my clients was forming a very nice zone. In addition to having that symmetry, I also had an extension, okay, and we, we say many moves term to, tend to terminate at extensions of prior swings. Well, that was a swing, a low to high swing that gave us a 1618. 618 and 1618 are your golden ratios. That also correlated with the symmetry to find a nice cluster of support, 186 to 88 on IWM. Talk about clearly defined risk, right? Clearly defined risk, put your stop just underneath it. And uh, if it doesn't hold, then it keeps your losses to a minimum. Hit, held, bounced. And um, as you can see, when I ran this chart, I did this presentation last week. So far, we had a rally of $22.89 on IWM. Of course, that's much bigger on the right, right? As far as um, why we use this type of analysis, it enables you to identify high probability, relatively low risk trade setups where the risk is clearly defined along with the targets. The targets are where you're going to take your money. That is why we make them green. We say many moves tend to extend, uh, 
uh, stop at prior swing extensions. So that's why we want you to take your profits at those extension targets. And we'll talk about that just a little bit more in a little while. This works on any time frame and essentially any good market data. I've applied this method to stocks, ETFs, futures, and Forex. This is an excellent methodology to use with option strategies, but I also uh, personally use it a lot with stocks. You can see things in the market that you will never see using indicators alone, but it does work well with indicators. It's basically like a really nice tool in your toolbox. The, the hammer or the screwdriver, one of the ones you use the most. Uh, the Fibonacci numbers, okay, the series is you, the numbers add, okay, so one plus one is two, two plus two, two plus three is five, five plus eight is 13, so forth, so on. The number series will continue to infinity by adding the two previous numbers. The ratios used are 0.382, 50%, 618, 786, 1.0. Those are the retracements, the 382, 50%, 618, and 786. And I do use 236 quite a bit also. The symmetry is the 1.0. The extensions are your 1272 and your 1.618. And sometimes we use the 2.618 also. A lot of you have heard of retracements before. And when you're talking about retracements, um, you know, a lot of you have heard the halfback, the 50%. Well, for possible support, we run the low to high swings using the ratios 236, 382, 50%, 618, and 786. And for possible resistance, we go from a high to a low to show us where the move may stop or you may get in trouble on the way up. These are some example charts that I have for you that um, are recent that I use with my clients, okay? So what you see here is you, you see the initial bounce off of symmetry, okay? That is not a retracement. What I used this retracement for recently was I said, if you missed that initial bounce on the 11th of March, the 618 retracement or the 786, you can use as risk as long as it's part of your trading plan to get into a move that has not yet met the target extensions. And that's what I use with my clients a lot. Or you can use it to add contracts. Say you did get in on the 11th of March. Then you can use those as risk. Um, here is Pan W. So what happened with this one is, um, of course, it had that massive pullback. And we went through all of the symmetry on the way up. But I had a lot of people asking me, what kind of support you, do you have? So I used retracements and extensions to find support on here. And I uh, have a lot of cl happy clients so far that did take that uh, cluster of support the 21st of February on uh, PANW. As far as Walmart is concerned, here's another time where it really didn't get quite to that symmetry. I told the clients to make sure they risked underneath that symmetry with the 618. But a 618, I see that bounce a lot from a 618. And um, I, that's why they're pink. They're one of our favorite retracements. It's the only pink retracement. And we hit and held there on Walmart and met the first target on the upside. I haven't looked at it lately. Interested to see where it is now. This is magical. I actually have a friend who works at this pharmaceutical company, which is one reason why I follow it. And uh, it hit and held that 618 retracement. Yet again, okay, and, and and this chart did not look so great, right? All the moving averages were on the side of the bears, but the risk was clearly defined. There's symmetry and a retracement between 164, 167, you know, 68 area. As far as Costco is, I mean, as Cisco is concerned, uh, Cisco, here's another, whoops. Here's another opportunity where we went through the bullish symmetry of this swing up. And what I mean by that is from that low to that high, when it pulled back, I had no symmetry, but I had a 618 that it bounced from. And same thing, we bounced from the 50% back here, then bounced from the 618, okay? And then came up to that 50%, failed, came down to the 786. So this is a great opportunity for you to see where I use retracements as risk. 
And uh, as long as it's part of your trading plan, you can do the same thing. Next, I'm going to talk about those price extensions that I talked about earlier. Um, these are the targets, not always, but uh, they are used for support and resistance. For price extensions, we use the ratios 1272 and 1618. They're usually targets and many moves tend to terminate extensions of that swing. So that's why we want you to take your profits when you get to these green numbers, green for money, of course, never gonna go broke taking profits, right? So here is another example um, on, let's see, this is crowd. And the, the charts that you're seeing are charts that I actually ran for clients. OK, so th this is this is what happens in my room. I will run charts for you and you can make chart requests on Monday and Wednesday. And then there, there's a lot of charts that I do Monday through Friday also, obviously. And uh, Carolyn, the Fibonacci queen, comes in the afternoon and works works with us also. But here's an example on crowd where we hit and held risk clearly defined on the 21st of February and came up to that first target extension at 356, rally of $92 so far at the time, and failed. Okay, so what we want you to do after you have your initial stop underneath that 274, 275 zone, we want you to try to trail up those stops. Now, it may have stopped you out if you trailed up your stops when we had this pullback here, but it looks like to me it came down to the 786 and kept going. So that would have been a good indicator for you to not get out of the trade yet. It also happened to correlate with that 50% right there. And then it kept going up to those target extensions. Uh, as far as Visa is concerned, we hit and held a nice cluster of support there on the 7th of March. Came up to that first uh, extension target at 288, and it was a rally of $13 so far on Visa. As far as Walmart is concerned, we talked about this hitting and holding on that 618 earlier, came up to that extension target. I know Walmart's gone a lot further since then, <laughs> but it was a rally of $4 so far there on Walmart. And this is that magical, the pharmaceutical company hit held on the 9th of February and a rally of $109 so far past that first extension target. And this is Disney. OK, a lot of people were um, were confused about Disney and, uh, you know, whether or not it was time to get in. And um, I had a client run ask me to run this chart. Not only did I give them an entry on the 11th of January, but then when it pulled back again, you know, it looks like about a week and a half later, I gave another entry in case somebody missed that initial entry around ninety three dollars. So it's an opportunity to either add contracts or get into the trade since we weren't at target extensions yet if you missed the initial bounce. We kept going and the first extension of target was 98, met that, next one 101, met that, and then we actually met the third target all the way up at 109. This is what I was talking about earlier, how we do look at that 2618. Of course, we did have pullbacks along the way, which may have given you um, an indication to go ahead and take your profits and get out. But um, I wanted to show you this example of why we do use three different targets. Um, as far as the red numbers are concerned, that's what I like to call them. Uh, I think one of the great things that I, I do as a teacher and educator is that I color code things and I talk about the colors because I don't want you to get too confused about the numbers. You don't need to understand this work to use it. I'm very uh, purposeful. I don't know if that's the best word, but I definitely make sure that you are aware of what the setups are. If you are confused, I will answer anything, any questions that you have. There are no dumb questions. Um, symmetry is one of the most, the easiest things to, to understand because it's pre just previous swings in the market. It's things that have already happened that are high to lows projected from the more recent high or lows to highs project projected from the more recent um, low. So uh, I'll go over more of that in just a second, but they're measured from three points on the chart to compare swings in the same direction. 
And we mostly use 100%. We have used 1618s before, but we mainly use the 100%, which are red, and then the 1618s are like a burgundy. But I mean, that's probably less than 2 or 3% of the time. Uh, this is what I was saying earlier for possible resistance. I go from a low to a high to a low, and it shows me the resistance. So that arrow is going up to where the move may stop. Then for possible support, I go from a high to a low to a high to show me where the move might bounce. Here are some examples that I've got for you. Uh, let's see, this is NVIDIA. <laughs> NVIDIA back when it was $400, right? This is from the 14th of August, 2023. I used these prior swings in the market. One was $79.45, one was $84.61, and one was $83.51 to form a cluster of symmetrical support. And that move itself was $77.70. What's so great about this is that you put your stop underneath there and if it busts it, then you just get out and your your losses are minimal. That's one of the biggest keys to trading, right? Is keeping those losses minimal. I mean, you can have one good trade and 10 losers, but if you're doing things correctly, that one good trade overly wipes out any losers that you may have. So you wanna keep your losses very minimal. This work helps you to do that. And at the time, <laughs> rally of $99.55. I think we know at this point it's uh, whatever, $500. <laughs> as far as uh, sell H so Celsius, this is an interesting stock for me that I do keep up with because I bought it at 70 cents and uh, I bought, I don't know, like 50 shares to put in my daughter's account. And I think like, a hundred to put in my own account. And I wish that I had done, you know, 10,000 um, because it has just done amazingly. They did split. So it's back under a hundred dollars. But at the time that I did this chart, this is a great example of symmetry. We had the swing of $16 and 55 cents, another swing of $16 and 18 cents and another six swing of $16 and 75 cents projected from the 15th of August high to form the cluster 166 to about 168, hit, held in a rally of $35 at that time. As far as Amazon is concerned, uh, here's another you know, great chart to look at. We had a lot of symmetrical moves here, $6.62, $6.49, $6.78, $6.50, projected from the 6th of June high, gave us a nice cluster of support, risk, clearly defined. Now, what I want to show you now is when it's good for resistance. Okay, so these are examples of when the market is not looking so good or a stock is not looking so good. And I say, this is where the move could stop and we can make a deeper downside correction. So this is FedEx. And I uh, had a move for $20.17, a swing for $18.63, a swing for $18.04, and, and then I projected it from the low of the 7th of September, which means I go low, high to that low, low, high to that low, low, high to that low, forms a cluster of resistance, 214 to 17, failed, and it was a decline of $73.91 by the time we started to bounce. As far as Tesla is concerned, this is another one where um, I saw this happening on the way down. Um, I use 513 EMAs, exponential moving averages, and 50 and 200 simple moving averages to show me when things are not looking so great. And that 5 and thir 13 crossed over, and then we got under that 50, then under the, that 200, and um, I just started looking at a lot of resistance, and we had that swing that a lot of people, and I think we got some of the moving averages back on the side of the bulls, were like, okay, Tesla's fine. It's going to be great. And then it ended up failing off of that price resistance. And I warned my clients, you know, hey, we could make a deeper downside correction. And uh, and they listened. And that was a good thing. I, I don't know if all of them listened. <laughs> Psychology is a thing. But um, we did fail off that 314 area. And uh, at the time, 
we had made a decline of $211 by January 6th of 2023. Of course, we've gone much lower since then. Symmetry can be used to determine support. That's one of the things that we just talked about. Resistance that we also talked about. Um, but it also can show you projections where the market might turn. Or when it is broken, it may indicate a deeper downside correction or a more of an upside correction. Okay, so this is an example of more of an upside correction. So we're going up, up, up. Then we come down. This is NFE. I had these swings that were resistance here. And I projected them from that 6th of July low. When we went through that symmetrical resistance of this swing up, it told me that once we went through it and we had this high, to look at a pullback because we didn't have any more symmetrical resistance at that point and this stock was looking much better. Okay, so it can tell you when maybe you're getting into a better position with something if you want to. And what I tell people is I say, let's get through that symmetrical resistance first, then let's buy on a pullback to continue to move up. Uh, this is uh, futures contract KC. We one one of the reasons why I mean this was in trouble was because we broke the bullish symmetry of this swing up. So we had that low on the 11th of January, the high on the 18th of April, and then we started pulling back. And when we didn't bounce from 174, 171, or 170, I said, uh oh. This is breaking the bullish symmetry of this last swing up. I expect it to either retest the low from the 11th of January or make a much deeper downside correction. My most powerful trade setup is called a Fibonacci price cluster. This is the coincidence of at least three Fibonacci price relationships that come together within a relatively tight range. I don't care what colors it is. It can be three greens and a it could be three greens. It could be two blues and a pink. It could be a green, a blue, and a pink. It could be a red, a green, a pink. It can be any of those. Um, how, how do you trade this? You can combine any set of indicators and or triggers to show you that a zone may hold. That is why I really emphasize making sure you have your own trading plan and making sure you see how it works for you. You, you need your own toolbox in order to be able to trade on this market. You can try out what other people have tried, but in the end, you need to make sure that what you're doing works for you and it also works for your psychology. Uh, the great thing is that I love is that we also use these numbers for timing. We use the same ratios on the that we use on the price axis of the market and apply it to the time axis. So I can do timing and price uh, we measure the time between a prior high to high swing, that's an example, and then multiply that time by ratios and, pro and project the results in the future. When we see clusters of time, we look for a possible change in trend. And when time and price come together, you have a much higher probability trade setup. Love it when time and price come together. I'm here to help you with your Fibonacci analysis. Use Fibonacci analysis as part of your trading plan. I look forward to seeing you in the Fibonacci market and stock stream at Elliott Wave Trader. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to follow me at Trader Tammy One on Twitter. And I also, in about half an hour, will be on Trader TV, which is on YouTube. They have over 400,000 subscribers. And I will be live on Trader TV in about at 4.15 Eastern. If you go on YouTube, it is uh, free for you to join. Okay, you have a busy day. <laughs> um, we did have one question. Um, it was about symmetry and then you kind of dived a little deeper into symmetry, but do you have any um, clarification that you wanted to add on how to assess symmetry and you know what it is? Absolutely. So let me see. Do, 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 do. Undefined, and I don't know if I oh, a crude chart is really good right now that I could show. I don't know if I 
if I can share this, sometimes if I move screens, can you see this? Or is it, is, do I have yes. to stop sharing? You can see the, mm -hmm, the I can, yes. Fantastic. Okay, so this is crude. And um, uh, the newer contract, the K contract, this is something that I get, I do every day in my room. I do crude. I do crude um, and crude 30 minute gold, 30 minute. A lot of these charts you're seeing up top are, are charts I do every single day. And, uh, and plus I do more than these. Um, so what I did in crude in order to find symmetrical support is I use this three pointed tool that you see that's red right here. This program is called Dynamic Trader. It was made by uh, Bob Miner and uh, Carolyn Broden also, but uh, Bob Miner owns it. It's the best as far as I'm concerned when it comes to trying to do uh, Fibonacci work. It is not a trading platform. It's just a drawing platform. Um, but that this is what I use in order to do my Fibonacci work. But basically what I do is in order to find the support that I have right now, as I look at, you know, some of these swings inside the swings, um, I look at some of these previous swings in the market. And, you know, so for example, I say high, low to the more recent high. And as you can see that 80.26 to 80.34, there's a lot of uh, previous swings in that area. So I do consider that a very nice setup zone on crude. But I mean, any of these swings back here, I am I haven't done this larger one yet because it's pretty you know far below the market. But um, I use all of these swings back here and say, hey, you know, these are places where the market may bounce. Now, I will tell you personally, uh, when I'm trading, I prefer for there to be less setup zones. It's probably the best way to say it. So uh, IWM is a great example of that. Um, we, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of support left on IWM. I have a lot of other areas of support up here that were already broken. And um, as, you know, as you can see right there, so I really did like this area of support from IWM that we bounced from yesterday because the risk was so clearly defined. I knew that if we went through that, you know, we could make a much, much deeper downside correction because the next area was uh, much lower there on IWM. So um, I like it when the risk is very clearly defined on crude right now. We do have a lot of areas, um, but uh, on IWM, that was not the case. Um, PANW is the same way. Um, let's see. NVIDIA, of course, has tons of support. So the longer something has been going up, the more likely you're going to have more support, right? That just makes sense. Uh, I did a, a chart on Airbnb recently uh, that we ended up bouncing from some of the support there on the 15th of March. Um, so, you know, this is kind of, this is what I do all the time. And, and one thing that I do, I don't see it on here, probably on another, um, another screen over here. I recently did Carnival Cruise Lines because I was super interested in what's going on on Carnival. And uh, one thing that I liked about Carnival is the risk was very clearly defined. Um, I just said to myself personally, um, I own the stock outright. If it goes below $15, because that's really where my price support goes down to, then if it goes through that, then we'll either retest the 20th of February low or make a deeper downside correction. So personally, I didn't look for a trigger or an indicator. I just knew what my risk was based on what my work looks like. Uh, so it, it, you know, at this time, it does say buy and hold for me as long as that holds that fifteen dollar price point. Um, so you can use the work if you're trading options, but you can also use it uh, as a risk if you are wanting to do some buy and hold. Which I know there's a lot, probably a lot more people out there than people that are trying to trade options. Uh, we do live futures every day which is awesome. Uh, the screen that I have that's up in the uh, Elliott Wave Trader uh, room has live Tesla, Amazon, Apple, NVIDIA, ES, which is the futures for SBX. 
and uh, NQ, which is the futures for NASDAQ. Okay, and let's do one more question. Um, what about XLE and oil stocks? Do you have a view on that? Yeah, so that's the, I mean, the crude, I cover crude right now. Uh, I'll, we always cover crude and gold. Those are the two of the futures that we cover constantly. Uh, my view is buy a pullback. <laughs> All of the moving averages are on the side of the bulls. If you decide to buy the pullback, one of the great thing, you know, another great thing about my work that I do live is that I will show you where you may get yourself in trouble on the way up. So on the daily, crude is looking great. We're above the 200, which is the pink dotted line. We're above the 50, which is the green line. The five is the blue line. That's above the 13, which is the red line. So all of the moving averages are on the side of the bulls. What I mean by that is price action is above all those moving averages. We don't have any symmetrical resistance in our way, which is awesome. But we are having quite a pullback here, but the moving averages still look good on the daily. However, on the 30, the moving averages have crossed over to the side of the bears. And this morning, I gave this short setup. So on the intraday charts, we use 8 and 34 EMA. So because the blue 8 had crossed below the red 34, I said here, you know, is an opportunity for you to short crude. And we did end up meeting that first target on the downside. And now we're bouncing again. So if somebody decided to get bullish on crude daily from the support, what I would want to tell you is just please make sure that you're paying attention to what's going on in this 30 minute chart since uh, the moving averages have crossed over to the side of the bears. And of course, you're always going to see that uh, on a lower time frame chart before you do on the higher time frame charts, right? That's where it starts is on the lower time frame charts. So then, you know, I come and I, I look at the, the bearish symmetry of this swing up, uh, which is something that I talked about in the presentation. And what, you know, what I have to say about crude at this point is I would like to see us bust that 82.14 area before I am uh, confident that this zone is going to hold on the daily. So what I would recommend is I would recommend just maybe sitting tight until you get these moving averages back on the side of the bulls. We bust that 82.14 area. Then you look at a 30 minute pullback for support to enter to continue the move up or if that low is in place for today for the targets of this swing, which if that low is in place for today would be 83.74 and 84.54. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today, Tammy. Um, that was an amazing presentation. And thank you, everyone, for being here with us. Um, yeah, and wonderful. Good luck with the rest of your day. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all having me. Of course. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.